you think Jesus was an alien? I think Jesus was half human, half alien, and I'll tell you why. Imagine a story where the savior of mankind is not only a spiritual leader, but also a product of an alien lineage, tasked with guiding humanity toward enlightenment amidst a backdrop of ancient civilizations and hidden truths. This provocative exploration beckons us to reconsider everything we thought we knew about our origins and the nature of divinity. Are we ready to confront the possibility that our greatest myths might hold secrets of a cosmic heritage? Prepare to embark on a journey that blurs the lines between faith and science, challenging you to rethink the very essence of what it means to be human in a universe filled with mysteries yet to be unraveled. In exploration of ancient texts and modern interpretations, Billy Carson, a prominent figure in the realm of alternative history and ancient astronaut theories, posits a fascinating and controversial idea. Jesus Christ may have been an alien. This assertion, while seemingly outlandish to many, is rooted in a blend of mythology, ancient civilizations, and interpretations of biblical narratives that challenge conventional views. At the heart of Carson's theory is the ancient Sumerian civilization's concept of the Anunnaki, a group of deities often depicted as extraterrestrial beings. He argues that these beings not only influenced human genetics, but also played a significant role in shaping human civilization. These are not what they call quote-unquote angels, in my opinion. These are what people call aliens or advanced. I call them advanced beings because we look a lot like them and they look a lot like us. There is some distinction. You, they, they were distinguishable from humans, but they look just like humans in the biblical text. In the, in the Bible, in some texts, they call them the Anak, A-N-A-K, the Anunnaki, the Anak. They say we were, we were grasshoppers in their eyesight. They were big people. Uh, and these people came from heaven to earth. And in the Neturu, in ancient Egypt, they say the Neturu came down from heaven to earth and turned mud into a kingdom. In the Aboriginal culture, the Aboriginal elder, I've been on, I've been on walkabouts in the outback. The Aboriginal elders verbal handed down history for thousands of years. We were seated on this planet by the Pleiadians. They brought us here. We were the first people here. You go to the Hopi tribe, the Lakota tribe, our star brothers seated us on this planet. I mean, we, we keep slapping our ancient ancestors in the face, doubting their wisdom and doubting their understanding of what really happened uh, and doubting their drawings that they left behind and their texts they left behind by coming up with their own modern day mainstream idea of what we think happened when they left the proof and the evidence right for us. Carson suggests that Jesus could be a product of this extraterrestrial lineage embodying both divine and alien characteristics. He draws parallels between Jesus' miraculous abilities and the advanced technologies attributed to the Anunnaki, implying that Jesus' powers could be understood as a result of his alien heritage. I think Jesus was half human, half alien, and I'll tell you why. When you look at the, uh, the Apocrypha text, you discover, first of all, in a regular Bible, you discover he's born of a virgin birth, right? But then in the Apocrypha text, you discover that his grandmother was also born of a virgin birth. So it seems like this establishment of a bloodline there specifically. When you look at the ancient text where Jesus gets all of his information from, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, 36, 38,000 year old text, in there, in the book that I wrote about it, I line up the Christian text yeah. and I line up Jesus's text from the New Testament. And uh, in this text, he writes about uh, coming, to, coming to this planet after the Great Flood and seeing the temples of wow. ancient Kemet sticking up out of the mud and actually going on a mission to help rebuild civilization. Not that it was for the first time, but he's rebuilding it to a high level. His father sends him on a mission. His father says, go, uh, go to the land of Cam and do the plan that ye know of. So he gets, his, he gets his crew and he gets into the great ship of the master and he takes off until the planet disappears. When he gets over the land of Cam, he goes, I see the land of Cam beneath us. Mm. And I see the temples rising up out of the mud that were flooded by the fountains. Now we come back. Now he comes down to the ground. Yeah, he opens the door, he comes out, and he calls these people barbarians coming to attack him. Crazy. Probably territorial. Crazy. 
And he says, I raised my staff and sent out a ray of vibration, stopping them still as fragments of stone of the mountain. And it stops them in their tracks. It makes them feel like they're in pain, makes them feel like they want to vomit, put voices in their head. Wow. Whatever you want to do, you can program the frequency into their body to make it do that. So then here's the key about the God thing, him, you know, not wanting to be one of these gods. When, they, when he released them from that, he started talking to the people peacefully and they started groveling at his feet. And he said, no, 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 Just get up. He said, I'm a son of Atlantis. He didn't say I'm God. And he said, I'm a son of Atlantis and I'm here to bring you back up to a high level of civilization. And he worked with the people for a couple thousand years to rebuild that civilization. Before he left and told us, he told all of his people that came here with him, spread out around the planet and duplicate what we did here. In his discussions, Carson delves into the concept of reincarnation, suggesting that Jesus may have been a reincarnation of an Atlantean leader, further complicating his identity. He references ancient texts, such as the Emerald Tablets, which he claims provide insights into Jesus' teachings and origins that are not found in the canonical Bible. According to Carson, these texts reveal a deeper understanding of Jesus' mission, transcending the traditional narrative of salvation and delving into cosmic responsibilities. When you read the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, you discover that he talks about he developed the ability to incarnate at will on and in any plane that he desires. That's pretty powerful stuff. He's saying he can come back however he wants and when he wants and in any, any dimension that he wants. Uh, he even talks about having rejuvenation chambers, which is what I believe the Serapium is located in Saqqara in Egypt is, is, is one of his rejuvenation chambers where they would actually uh, create bodies and put bodies in these gigantic megaton stone boxes made of granite and diorite, which are still radioactive, by the way. You can take your Geiger counter, they're still radioactive. They have an energy source coming out of them. And then he said that we, I would transfer my consciousness from one body to the next. He would leave another body in there rejuvenating for 100 years, then he'd come back and get it. And he'd do that over and over again. And that, by that method, he lived through eons. Pretty interesting. So I think maybe they decided to come back through a womb. The theory that Jesus was an alien has garnered mixed reactions. For some, it offers an intriguing lens through which to view biblical stories, suggesting that ancient peoples may have interpreted advanced beings as gods. Others view it as a reductive and sensationalist interpretation that undermines the spiritual significance of Jesus' life and teachings. Critics argue that such theories often lack substantial evidence and can detract from the moral and ethical teachings attributed to Jesus. So when it comes to Christians being bothered by his claims, here's a couple pieces of advice. The first thing to note is that, similar to Terrence Howard, he often uses scripture and random jargon out of context as a way to appear credible and well-studied. Another reason why Christians shouldn't be bothered by what he's saying is because you have to remember that humans also accept or reject beliefs based off of emotional reasons. Well, if you find yourself convinced by people like Billy and Terrence Howard, let me just say, I get it. In a world where so many of us are skeptical about systems and institutions, people are looking for answers and people like Terrence Howard Howard and Billy Carson, they do a good job of playing into that need. But in reality, they only seem to have the answers since they say a lot of things quickly and confidently. Billy Carson's suggestion that Jesus might be of extraterrestrial origin sparks a conversation about the intersection of faith, history, and the possibility of alien life. This challenges traditional narratives and encourages a re-examination of ancient texts. Whether one views Jesus as a divine figure, a historical leader, or a cosmic entity, Carson's theories serve as a reminder of the enduring mysteries surrounding one of history's most influential figures. As humanity explores the cosmos, questions about our origins and the potential for otherworldly influences remain as relevant as ever. That brings us to the end of another interesting video segment. Please reach out to us through the comments section to share your thoughts. We would be delighted to hear from you. Support our work by clicking the like button and sharing with your friends and family to help spread our eye-opening extra narrative. Don't forget to subscribe to stay updated with our latest content and help the channel grow. We're happy to have you with us. Thank you for watching.